Let us now talk about the next structure or part of our elementary canal that is small intestine. Small intestine is the longest part of the elementary canal. So if we are talking about the length of this, length of small intestine is about 20 feet or approximately 6 meters and small intestine has 3 parts. So it is made up of 3 parts. The first part is known as duodenum. This part of small intestine is uncoiled. That means here there is no coiling. It is not coiled. It is a bent tube. We will draw the diagram. So it is a bent tube. It is not a coiled structure. And it is a short part. It is approximately 25 centimeters long. So, the maximum part that is 20 feet or approximately 6 meters of small intestine, the first part makes only a little bit part and it is not at all coiled. The next part of small intestine is known as jejunum. Jejunum is a coiled structure. So, this is highly coiled. Lengthwise, it makes about 8 feet. Out of 20, 8 is jejunum and the last part makes about 12 feet. And this is hardly 25 centimeters. So the third part is ileum. And this is the longest part and it is coiled also. So this one is also highly coiled. And lengthwise it is approximately 12 feet. So if we compare the three parts, ileum is the longest, about 20 feet. Jejunum is less long as compared to this one. But it is also a long part that is 8 feet. And the duodenum part is only 25 centimeters. We will take the internal structure also in a minute. But let us quickly go over this. The Esophagus opens into this bag like structure that is the stomach part and stomach leads into this small intestine and here we made the sphincter which was called pyloric sphincter. So this bent part, this is the first part that is duodenum. This is the part that we are talking about. We said it is not coiled and this duodenum then opens into the coiled part. So here I am drawing this part which is representing the large intestine. And the last part of the large intestine that is rectum and this is the anus. Now let us see what happens to duodenum and then opening into this jejunum. So this duodenum, as we said, it is not a very coiled structure. It comes here and this is the part where we see this highly coiled tube. That is our jejunum and ileum part. So this is highly coiled part. And here it opens into large intestine. The part which I have drawn in red, this is representing the coiled part of small intestine. That is jejunum and ileum. And this upper loop like part, this is the duodenum. And this blue thing is representing the large intestine. We'll take about, talk about large intestine after we are done with this one. Now, one opening of small intestine is with the stomach. And this is guarded by pyloric sphincter. And at the other end, the small intestine leads into a part of large intestine which is known as cecum. And in this cecum is present this small finger-like structure which is known as vermiform appendix. And this opening, this is known as ileo for ilia and cecum opening. 
because this structure is cecum and the opening of ileum into cecum is known as ileocecal aperture or ileocecal opening. So this long tube has one small uncoiled part and two long parts. So this part is representing the jejunum also and it is also representing the ileum part also. Now if we see the internal structure, the intestine, complete intestine is lined with glands and in this, in these two parts that is jejunum and ileum, the inner membrane that is mucosa is thrown into folds. If we take a section of elementary canal, we would see the outermost layer serosa followed by muscularis, same outer is going to be longitudinal, inner is going to be circular and then submucosa part. The mucosa is thrown into such folds and these folds, they are also lined with epithelial layer and these folds, they are known as villi. One is known as a villus. So these are called villi. If we enlarge one villus, Suppose this is one villus that we are drawing and this would have these cells, the tall columnar cells and each cell also has these kind of finger like structures. So upper free surface of the cell also has very fine finger like structures. So this bigger fold, this was called a villus and these are the villi. The number of villi in intestine is in millions and the purpose is the surface area increases and each cell of that villus also has this kind of fold and these folds are known as microvilli and because of microvilli this epithelium becomes brush border. If I make the same structure here all these cells would have these kind of finger like structures. So this epithelium, this complete epithelium is known as brush border epithelium. And this brush border epithelium would increase the surface area for absorption. Maximum absorption of food takes place in this part that is jejunum and ileum. And that is why the mucosa is thrown into folds and these folds are known as villi. And each cell on this villus is also thrown into these folds. These are known as microvilli, these small finger like structures. And because of that, the epithelium is known as brush bordered epithelium, which increases the surface area for absorption. This intestine is lined with glands. So these intestinal glands, they are mainly of two types. One is known as crypts of Liber Kuhel. These are one category of glands and second are known as Brunner's glands. Brunner's glands. Crypts of Liber Kuhel are present all over the small intestine. So they are all over small intestine. Brunner's glands are found only in one part of the small intestine. We need to draw this diagram and then we will understand where the location of these two glands is. So let us make the diagram of Cryptoplabarcohan and Brunner's gland. For that, we will have to make this diagram slightly bigger. So when we draw these uh, villi, because these glands, crypts of liber cohan, they are embedded in these villi. So if we draw these villi like this, then this becomes the mucosa part and this structure, the fold is the villus and this is the submucosa. Now in submucosa, there are glands present, that is Brunner's gland, but we'll take that up a little later. Let us first talk about crypts of Liebertohan. These depressions, the deep-seated tubular areas, these are known as 
स्क्रिप्ट ऑफ लाइबर कुहन एंड देर आर वेरियस सेल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट हियर सो ऑल दीज सेल्स दे सीक्री देर juices or secretion into this narrow area so this narrow area is known as the crypt of liber cohen and as we have written they are found all over the small intestine and they are deeply seated in the villi or between the villi the second bruner's glands and we are drawing it here these bruner's glands uh okay let us write one more thing in this case these are in the form of tubular structures so these crypts are tubular structures and their secretion is mainly enzymes and mucus so mainly enzymes and mucus it comes from crypts of liber cohen let us draw bruner's glands bruner's glands they are present in the sub mucosa part crypts of liber cohen are in the mucosa region that is in the innermost layer and bruner's glands they are in the form of cluster of cells and they are present in the sub mucosa and bruner's glands are mainly confined to duodenum area that means the first part of small intestine so crypts of liber cohen are all over the intestine that means everywhere and bruner's glands they are in sub mucosa part and they are confined mainly to duodenum and from here the ducts arise so all of them they pour their secretion and with the help of the duct this secretion is also poured here so there are two glands which are secreting and bruner's glands secretion is alkaline watery secretion with mucus so in bruner's glands there is mainly alkaline part which is going to neutralize the acid which is coming from the stomach plus there is water and mucus whereas crypts of liber cohen produce mainly the enzymes and mucus and secretion of both these glands that is secretion of both the glands and both the glands here we mean crypts of liber cohen and bruner's gland is known as intestinal juice and it is also known as succus entericus so combined secretion is known as intestinal juice or succus entericus and every day production or volume of succus entericus which is produced per day is approximately 1 liter per day that much of intestinal juice is produced so two glands crypts of liber cohen which are in the mucosa part and they are deeply seated in between these villi bruner's gland as we said they are in the sub mucosa part and mainly confined to the duodenal region and also we need to write here is in sub mucosa layer whereas crypts of liber cohen are in the mucosa layer and their combined secretion is known as succus entericus intestinal juice contains various enzymes mucus water and alkaline substances or uh, basic things which are going to neutralize the uh, acidity of uh, hydrochloric acid which is coming from the stomach now when we come to digestion process we will write down actual composition of the intestinal juice now one more additional thing in the duodenum open the duct which brings secretion from liver as well as from pancreas so after this we will talk about large intestine and then we will see how the various juices are poured into duodenum part duodenum is the part of small intestine and that's why we are uh, taking this reference but we will talk about this after we have discussed the large intestine part also 
Let us now see the various cells which are present in the crypts of Liber Cohen. So we are talking of the cells. Cells of crypts of Liber Cohen. The first cell, they are called goblet cells. Goblet cells secrete mucus. They secrete mucus. Second, the cells are called penneth cells. And they secrete the enzymes. The third type of cells which are present in the crypts are endocrine cells. And they are known as enterochromorphin. And as we said, they are endocrine, they secrete the local hormones. Fourth type of cells are argentafin cells. Argenta film cells secrete a vasoconstrictor serotonin. And the last type of cells are called basal cells. These basal cells, they are going to regenerate all other types of cells. So they produce other cells. That means if any of these cells, they get lost or damaged, then they would be replaced by the basal cells dividing to produce new cells. And we have already talked about that secretion of crypts of Liber Cohen and Brunner's glands together is known as succus antennicus. Now let us also talk about one more important thing which are known as pears patches. Pears patches are lymphoid tissues. Pears, patches are lymphoid tissues. And they are present in submucosa of ileum. Of ileum. And they help in Specialization of B cells. So this is the place where specialization of B lymphocytes takes place. One more important thing about them because they are present in the intestinal part and they are lymphoid. They are also known as intestinal tonsils. We talked about various types of tonsils which are present in the pharyngeal region and those tonsils are all lymphoid tissues. Here also the lymphoid tissue that is pears patches they are present in the intestinal part mainly in the ileum region submucosa of uh, ileum region and this is the place where the B lymphocytes in the cell mediated immune system there are B cells and T cells. So B cells, they undergo specialization in these pears patches. So these pears patches are present in ileum part. So this is, these are the cells which are there in crypts and pears patches. Now let us talk about the next part that is large intestine.